Hi, I'm uh, Roy Collin. I'm the host. And you can find everything about me and my five podcasts in the QR code wire.link forward slash podcaster as well as my coaching. And I'd like to thank my sponsors. So if you or somebody you know is struggling with anxiety and want to know how to be 100% anxiety free in six weeks without therapy or drugs, fully guaranteed, then let me tell you about our sponsor, Daniel Packard. Daniel Packard is a UC Berkeley mechanical engineer and his company has spent eight years researching and testing to develop an innovative process that solves your anxiety permanently in just six weeks. With an astounding 90% success rate, because the program is so effective, people who join the program only pay at the end once they have clear, measurable results. If you're interested in solving your anxiety in six weeks, fully guaranteed, and you want to learn more and have a free consultation with Daniel, go to danielpacker.com and you'll see it there is the QR code. Do you have high blood pressure and want to get off the meds? Doctors are amazed at what the Zona Plus can do. You get a $50 discount with my code ROY and you'll find the link at zona.com slash discount slash ROY or just use the code ROY on checkout and you'll see the code just behind me there for QR codes. You can take a screenshot. Stalflex, quality Polish manufacturers of metal products for telecommunication and workshop equipment and other metal articles. Let us know if you would like a quotation shipped internationally at very competitive prices. And you can see the QR code there. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Welcome to the Meditation Podcast. You can find all our episodes at meditationpodcast.org. We're also on BitChute and YouTube. You'll find the links in the podcast description. I'm also a podcasting coach, as I've got four other podcasts. But before getting to the top half percent, you'll find everything on bio.link forward slash podcaster. My guest today, entrepreneur, doctor of PT. She can explain, is that physical therapy or physiotherapy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breathing and pain specialist, a speaker, an author ultra marathon runner and a photographer and usually people say they're photographers but when you're watching this if you're on spotify or youtube or bit you'll actually see one of the <laughs> pictures she's taken behind her and when you check out her website you'll be very impressed please welcome dr amy novotny Novotny, yes thank you for having me roy it's a pleasure to be here and yeah i'm looking forward to our conversation no definitely looking forward so i mean i've obviously hit on all the different uh, points yeah. but you might just let the <laughs> listeners know a little bit more about amy sure i am i just growing up i've always been excited about life people the environment the world and so i have a wide variety of interests and that's kind of led me to challenge myself do photography to be creative running to challenge myself physically and just push myself to the limits but ultimately i really love helping people with pain stress anxiety and helping them get out of their current situation and feel better in their bodies so as you mentioned i did get my doctorate in physical therapy I decided to migrate away from that when I realized a lot of the principles in physical therapy are applied to the body. They're, they're external things that we do to the body to try to elicit a response. And when I was doing that, I was helping people. It was great. But at the same time, I was running and I was training to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And I started experimenting on myself and realized that I could calm down my nervous system, that fight or flight nervous system by changing myself internally. And that allowed me to get out of pain very quickly. So I could run marathons, 50 milers pain-free. I could run fast pain-free and I didn't have the typical runner's aches and pains. And so over the years I had to, I experimented on myself, but also on others to put together a process that I now use. And I help people with throughout the world through on Zoom. And I coach and teach people this stuff all the time. And I really love it because I'm not doing something to them. Like I was in the physical therapy world. I'm not doing anything external to them. I'm teaching them how to change themselves internally and affect their nervous system to bring about a change in their life, their body, how they feel. Brilliant. So. And yeah, you just threw out a marathon there and then it was like 15 <laughs> miles. I remember doing a charity walk when I was uh in school and it was like 13 mm -hmm. miles and I was exhausted and you've done ultra marathons <laughs> as well and two I believe 
100 milers. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes, 200 milers. I mean, the thought of that actually <laughs> makes me tired. So uh, <laughs> is, is that pure breeding mindset or how is it that you can go with that and you're not crippled yeah. from it? Because, I mean, that's incredible <laughs> mm -hmm. distance. Right. So it does obviously involve a lot of training and working up to it. But I had a little bit of advantage because I knew how to calm my nervous system down. So I didn't get the tightness that people typically would get. And that really helped me. So the first ultra, first 100 miler I did, I was just beginning to experiment with this whole process. And then the second 100 miler I did, I was really into this process. And I had run a very fast marathon six days before I did that 100 miler. And so I went into the 100 miler with no pain after having run that marathon. And I got through it, had no issues or anything. And then I ran another 100K about, well, actually it was four weeks to the day afterwards, and then did a few more races the following weekends. And the key was that I could keep my nervous system calm. And so my body, the muscles wouldn't tighten up and pull my bones and joints out of position, which is really why a lot of people have pain. They get tissues that pinch up against each other because their nervous system tells the muscles to behave a certain way. The muscles behave that way, pull the bones out of position. You get tissues that, that pinch and cause pain. And so I was able to avoid that by doing the work that I do, which is how I help other people and how I was able to do these races, <laughs> seemingly crazy distances. And so there is a huge physical component. Obviously there's a mental component, um, you have to work through your boredom of doing that for hours on end. And so there is a mental strength that comes with it as well. So like the way you're talking about that, I mean, when you're talking about the body to stop it being stressed, I mm -hmm. mean, it's the same that's basically happening. Somebody that's working and is getting stressed and their whole body's kind of doing the same thing. Or am I wrong in that? Yeah. So there is that you can, you can apply it to anything. You can apply it to if a work situation, a job performance, speaking, you can provide, um, implement it in some type of physical performance. And it's not just fixing your mind. It's not just, oh, we're going to work on the mindset. It's a complete physical thing that we're doing. And if you can change the body physically, so it's not stimulating the fight or flight nervous system, the mental and emotional stressors and triggers you have are not perceived as great a danger and your whole stress level and your ability to calm yourself dramatically improves. I mean, dramatically. And it can be applied to work businesses. I work with a lot of founders, CEOs, um, high profile uh, net worth people who use this strategy in their daily lives in interactions with other people. So they're not emotionally reactive. They can think clearly and have all those executive functions that we would all like to have for the majority of our day. And like, what's the kind of basis of it? I mean, obviously you mm -hmm. need to be dealing with people one-on-one, -on -one, but what's the whole, what exactly are you doing? Yeah. I, so yes, I do work with people one-on-one, -on -one, but I actually also have courses as well. So I do it in group settings, both video courses, and then um, occasionally throughout the year group courses as well. But basically what we're doing is changing the body position. So how do you hold your rib cage? That sets the stage. It goes against a lot of traditional fitness medical model because I'm telling people to stop doing this military Superman pose where they're sucking up their gut, sticking out their chest, pulling their shoulders back, which is what we're often taught as a, is a projection of confidence. What it also really is, is a stimulation of your fight or flight nervous system. When you stick your chest out and suck up your gut up and in, you're actually physically stimulating the fight or flight nervous system. You're changing your breathing mechanics to reflect a fight or flight breathing mechanics. And so your whole body goes on edge and goes on high alert. And we often don't realize it. And over time, you become dominant in those muscles that help you hold that position in a fight or flight status. And so as we work on changing you to feel and adjust your position, adjust the muscles that you're using and adjust your breathing mechanics, you start, you feel your body let go and relax, but that's not the end game because as soon as you relax, 
if you get distracted, your nervous system said, well, I've been trained for the past 40 years to be this way. So I'm going to go back to the way I just was. And so you lose it. So the process is learning how to stabilize and use your body completely differently. And this sounds crazy, but I teach people how to walk all over again, how to reach, how to squat, how to bend over, how to lift something. And it's not in the physical therapy world at all. It's the nervous system. We want to get the nervous system to stop being on high alert when you're doing all of your daily activities, whatever those are. And so you take this into athletics. I've done this with professional athletes in the NFL. For those who are familiar with America, the National Football League, um, professional golfers, MMA fighters, you get people to calm down their nervous system by changing the position of their rib cage and their breathing mechanics, very different from breath work. And when they can do that, they can feel their whole body release physically. And then they feel safe. And so when a mental and emotional stressor comes, it's not perceived as great a danger. Like, well, I'm safe in my body. Okay, how do I address this? Instead of going the other way where you panic and go into anxiety mode. And with the course that you mentioned then, is that more for the individual or is it more for other people to train people to do this that they'd be and, and if it's the training do you have to have like uh, like be a doctor or something or is it better that you're not indoctrinated already and the belief system <laughs> and you just come in as if like hey this sounds good i want to try to look at that yeah so the course is actually for individuals just wanting to learn how to control their nervous system calm themselves down alleviate stress pain anxiety I haven't put together a full on course yet for others that want to learn this process. And it's funny you say that because yes, people get indoct indoctrinated. When I was first developing this, I reached out to some physical therapy students who I had known. And I said, Hey, why don't you learn some of this stuff? Why don't I teach you? And they wouldn't, they didn't want to. They're like, no, no, no. I'm doing my doctorate. I know what's what, and they wouldn't do it. And it's interesting because I get that. I totally get that. When I was stumbling on this process and discovering it, I went back and forth. There was a lot of tears shed because I would go to work, treat people how I was taught in my doctoral studies. But then I would try to experiment on a few people and I would see those people get better. But then I would have a boss that would say, don't you dare do what you've been doing. But then people would get better if I would do my methods. And so eventually at a certain point, I left that practice. I was hired to travel around the world to keep a photographer out of a couple major surgeries. And when I went, when I finished that position and coaching him, I was like, I got to go on my own because I can't keep fighting the establishment if I really want to make a change and help people do things differently, but I have to be around people who are open to listening. And yeah. just curious because, yeah. I mean, I, I talk about a lot of this on my awakening podcast and you know, on the doctors. Mm -hmm. And even when you tell somebody something, despite having proof of it, they don't want to hear about it. But like the censorship yeah. that's going on with a lot of people, has that happened to you with what you're doing or is it too under the radar at the moment? I'm under the radar right now. It's getting more and more known, but no one has come after me yet. I'm hoping no one does either. It's not really on my. Uh, uh, it's list, more. It's but... more about your website and stuff. Don't get seen, or if you do a promotion on Facebook or different things, yeah. you know that instead of yeah. previously maybe getting a hundred, you know, parts yeah. and whatever thumbs up, that yeah, you'd be looking to get one. So that's kind exactly. Of, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But it's still, I still keep speaking at events. I get on podcasts. I do my best to share and, and it does take a little bit of time for people to buy into it. But then once they experience it, then I, then I get the, well, how come you're not doing a better job getting this out there? And I just have to laugh. I'm like, I'm trying. Look how hard it took me to convince you. You had to hear me five different times. And you have five people recommend me before you worked with me. And, you know, it's a joke, but it's it's life. It's how we are. We're humans. 
Exactly. And you mentioned you were going around with the photographer, mm -hmm. hence how you became such a fa fantastic <laughs> photographer. And I believe you've done stuff for National Geographic. Like, so it's like, like, I mean, I went into the website, you've got some incredible <laughs> photography. You. Thank you. It, that's, I will be honest, taking pictures of wildlife, like the penguins behind me, that's my favorite thing in the world to do. It just is so peaceful to watch animals and then work to work you have to work hard too because it's not just take a picture of an animal they have to be facing the right direction with the light an appeasing um pleasurable background behind them so it's it's a lot of work and but it's i love the challenge and because i i saw the video that uh like it, I, I don't know was it like a, a webinar or something that you were doing mm -hmm. uh you went to antarctica and that's where you were so i'm curious because mm -hmm. It's something that I can't get my head around and I'm trying to get answers. Like this <laughs> mm -hmm. Antarctic treaty with all these different countries mm -hmm. around the world and everything. And we're not allowed, mm -hmm. there's no flights going there and everything. Like, do you know, because you've been in that area, what's uh -huh. going on? What's going on there? Yeah. So there's actually now you can fly from the tip of Argentina down to some islands um, right on the tip of Antarctica. So if you get very seasick, and you can't take a ship across the Drake Passage, the Southern Ocean over there, you can actually fly. It's quite expensive, but just going to Antarctica in general is, is extremely expensive, whether you do ship or flight. So you can fly over to some islands and then take a boat and go to the different areas of Antarctica. So typically there is a, if you're going from like, let's say South America, there's this, there's a peninsula, the Antarctic Peninsula, and most people go on the western side of the peninsula and visit the, just various scenic areas where you can see wildlife and icebergs and kind of the land. Where I went was in on the eastern side of the peninsula where people typically don't go because it's part of this, what's called the Weddell Sea. And Shackleton, back in the early 1900s, that's where he had a shipwreck. It's very known, it's known for a lot of danger because you have ice that flows and it crashes into each other. So it's very easy for a ship to get wrecked. And that's where I went. You can also get to Antarctica going from Australia and New Zealand over on that side. I'm not as familiar with that. And I, it's a longer journey. So a lot of people like to go over to South America and then go down that way. It's just a little bit shorter of a journey to get down there and less chance of seasickness and, all those fun things that I got to experience going on a ship. And you had a, a helicopter on that ship as well, I believe. Yeah. So yes. like, mm -hmm. did you actually go on the helicopter yourself or? Yes. So once we got as close as we could to where the emperor penguin colony was, so we were about six miles away. We couldn't get any closer because the ice was too thick and we couldn't break past it. So then they assembled two helicopters on the ship. They, it was like Tinker Toys. You put them together, Legos, and um, and they're very old helicopters. Really no, you're old not helicopters. afraid to go up on that because if it plunges into the water, I mean, I've done ice bats, but that's kind of a, a different temperature there. <laughs> um, I It was scary. Like, you just had to keep thinking, I'm just going to make it there. I'm not going to think about all the rattles and noises and the shaking of the helicopter. And I mean, it, there was from the 1960s, it was extremely old. And so you, we flew six miles, we landed on the sea ice, and then we had to trek another mile and a half to get to the penguin colony. And we did that three days in a row, but there was some apprehension, I would say, but I just focused on, okay, what's in front of me? What can I see? What can I photograph? And not think about literally the rattles all around me. So. And and. <laughs> Just curious then with the mm -hmm. temperatures and everything, which you're kind mm -hmm. of training and what you're doing, were you mm -hmm. applying any of that so that you wouldn't be, I know that they've got probably fantastic clothing and everything, but there's still, mm -hmm. you know, the face exposed maybe in different things. Was there stuff you were applying your knowledge? Uh, yes and no. So I did it. I, I applied my knowledge to calm me down from my excitement so that I appeared calm to the penguins we weren't allowed to approach them, but if we sat still, they could approach us. And and I will say this very bluntly, not as something to brag about, but I calmed myself down and the penguins were very attracted to me. I had a lot of photographers that would follow me around because I 
could draw the penguins because I was very calm. Um, the temperature though was actually a lot warmer than expected. So it was like in the fifties Fahrenheit, which was too warm. And so we were actually shedding off clothes and the penguins were laying in the ice. So in that sense, it wasn't the cold blizzards that we were expecting. We're expecting 15, 20 degrees. So that's well below zero for centigrade. And we weren't getting that. It was, it was extremely warm. So I didn't have to apply it the way I was expecting. I was expecting to be extremely cold. I mean, I brought a lot of layers. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. So get, getting back into the, the like the helping yeah. people, because sure. I, I like I, I know, uh, say for surgeries as well, like because mm -hmm. unfortunately, I mean, I see it that it's it's a money game and mm -hmm. they don't even check and they just cut things off people and everything. And yeah. it even happened to me. I had a trap nerve, so-called trap nerve, I realized later, just through reading uh, John Sarno's mm -hmm. book that that okay. was a whole farce and I actually cured myself. But prior to that, tried everything and got a, an epidural and then they cut the this the disc saying that it was that was caused the trap nerve, which it wasn't. But yeah, and I know loads of people that that goes on mm -hmm. and it's all a lie. So mm -hmm. obviously you've seen a lot of stuff that let's go the surgery route first. That would be one. I mean, I presume you've seen something like that yourself that... Absolutely. I see those cases a lot, especially I, a lot of times I'll get people before they go into surgery and we stop the surgery. Let me kind of explain what happens to the body. So if we think about our nervous system tells our muscles how to behave, our muscles behave a certain way on our bones and joints, and that gives us movement or being stationary. So the problem is a lot of times when we have pain in our joints, like let's say our back or you have a nerve pain, it's a result of tissues butting up against each other. Surgeons like to, and this is what they're trained to do, which I understand. They like to go in there. They cut out things to create space for us so that we stop hurting and stop having impingement inflammation. But my thing is once you go in there and cut out space, what have you done to the nervous system that's telling the muscles to behave that way? Nothing. So that's why when a lot of people have back surgeries, a couple of years later, they have another surgery, another one, and another one, because nothing was done to change the nervous system that was telling the muscles to behave that certain way on the bones. And the nervous system I'm talking about is the autonomic one, the one that ramps us up and puts us in stress mode. So a lot of times we hear stress causes a lot of organ issues, heart issues, different diseases and, and conditions, but it also causes a lot of orthopedic problems too. Because when you have stress, your stress system causes your muscles to contract without your awareness. And those muscles are contracting on those same bones and joints and pulling them out of position. So if we can go and instead of them having surgery, we get their body to calm down the muscles release their hold on that joint. The joint then frees up and is be able to now slide nicely within the socket or however that joint is arranged. And that's how you can get people out of major surgeries by teaching them. You don't even have to touch them. You literally, and this is for joint replacements, back surgeries, neck surgeries. You literally teach them how to calm down their nervous system, get the rib cage back into a neutral position. So you're not stimulating the, the nervous system physically, but when you bring the rib cage back down, it frees up the back joints as well and the neck joints. So the compression stops on those discs and the nerve that was getting pinched that was going down a leg or an arm, it stops getting irritated because your space goes back to where it should be because the muscles are no longer compressing on the space that was causing the pinch in the nerve. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And okay. just curious then with people, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, oh, my knees are bad and I need to get mm -hmm. it. Because I remember, I can't remember the book, but I remember they did a dummy drill in the knee to mm -hmm. a few people. So they put the holes as if the operation was done and they got the same success rate. So it was like, it's kind of a mind thing. When I saw that, 
you know, because some people say, oh, because the doctor said, oh, it's it's the joint is rubbing up against the bone and it's this and it's that. And mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, we don't know any better. So we just assume that the doctor is correct. So mm-hmm. I assume similar with that. Yeah. So what you're kind of talking about is the placebo effect. So yeah. they just they just drill holes in people and try to get the, they got the same effect. So basically when they did both of those surgeries, whether they did the real surgery or just the holes, they probably flushed the area out with a lot of um, saline, gave them pain, nar- you know, narcotics, those types of things to help them, which probably cut down the pain, but it also gave them a reprieve from their daily habits that were driving the process in the first place. And so when people think they have changed and they then start to behave differently after a surgery. Maybe they they think everything's been fixed, so they're a little bit more calm. They're not so careful about their joint. They can have the same effect. But basically what we're doing though, what I'm doing with people is beyond the placebo effect. We're actually having them sense and feel and control the nervous system. So the muscles that are gripping that joint actually release. And that's how you can get people out of joint replacement surgeries who are considered arthritic bone on bone. And I usually, I go against the medical world and I challenge and I say, arthritis is not the cause of your pain. People have arthritis all the time and have it for years. And it's not like all of a sudden, boom, arthritis showed up one day and now you have pain. It's your nervous system caused the muscles to contract enough. Now they pulled you out of position and now you have pain and that can happen overnight, but arthritis doesn't happen overnight. So I cringe when I hear people blaming their pain on arthritis because it doesn't happen overnight. And people say, oh yeah, last Saturday, my pain showed up and it's arthritis. Mm, no. <laughs> so. or it's, I know it's going to rain because I, my arthritis is acting up. Yeah, I <laughs> You hear, hear that, that all <laughs> the time. And I tell them, I say, okay, you have pressure changes, you have weather changes, your nervous system responds to that, pulls your bones out of position, that's where the pain comes from. So we can address the nervous system so it doesn't respond to the weather. Guess what, you don't have that problem. And you might still have some degeneration of the cartilage, which is the definition of arthritis, but that wasn't your your problem, your true problem. And with hip replacement then, is it the same Mm -hmm. thing? Same exact thing, done that with people too, where they were supposed to have a hip replacement. They tried stem cells that helped a little bit. They tried everything else. We did work and we got the body back into position. Rib cages down, the pelvis went back to neutral. The muscles released around the hip. Voila, they didn't have to have the hip replacement. So it's, it can, and let's say you've had the surgery. I would still work on this stuff because you don't want the next surgery. You hear so many times someone has a hip joint replacement on the right side, then they have their left knee done, then they have their left hip done, then they have the right knee and it goes crisscross on the body. And you hear that so often. And I say, if you have one hip done, okay, or one knee done, whatever it is, let's say you're just listening to this now, go learn how to calm your nervous system down to release your body because the surgeon created space but your muscles still behave the way they did before that surgery, unless you've changed the way you feel and sense things. And are you incorporating kind of food into this at all? Because, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes these things are caused by the toxins that we're eating. And like, just, just from my own experience, I was a good boy. I didn't start drinking until I hit 18. And uh, (laughs) I was trying different drinks. And it was like every time I drank beer, but of course it was like, let's call it the McDonald's of beer. Mm -hmm. I think it was Budweiser and different things like that. And I used to be in agony. And I mean, I wouldn't be drinking that much, maybe three points. I'd wake up the next day, pains on my knees, pains. But then I just changed to a whiskey and that never happened again. But it was like, (laughs) yeah, you know, like is that just a toxic you know hops that they're putting in out there or like what part of everything or is just a combination of the whole lot 
Right. So when I do work with people, let's say one on one, we go over diet, we go over sleep habits, we go over movement, we I talk to them about everything. So I spend an hour and a half with them to get to know them and see how they move initially and just to see what their nervous system is like. And if they're open to it, I will give them suggestions on food and say, listen, these certain things will increase the inflammatory response in your body. You may swell kind of like what you experienced with beer, Roy, your body swelled and you didn't have enough space. So your joints ached because things were butting up against each other. And when you finally realize that, Ooh, it was because of the beer and you switched to whiskey, then, you know, okay, my body is inflammatory when it comes to hops, probably the gluten, whatever was in the beer. And so that set off your, your body to have extra fluid in joints, things butt up against each other. And so you're going to have the pain and other people have different reactions to different food. I am usually very careful when people are telling me that they're having a lot of dairy and I'll suggest to them dairy can create the same response where it inflames your body just as much. And just by simply getting rid of the dairy part, the inflammation can go down, but it can take weeks to months because the, the, the antibody or the response, the IgG response and all those um, things that crop up because of dairy take a while for them to go away. So we want to get the body to be as calm as possible. Sleep is another part of it. Going to sleep before midnight helps you have a, a, a sleep cycle, a 90 minute sleep cycle that's more dominant in deep sleep, which is when you go from sympathetic fight or flight mode into parasympathetic relaxation. So I try to get people to at least have one sleep cycle before midnight so that that can help bring their nervous system down. So we go through a lot of different things. Excellent. And I yeah. see a, a lot of people have like stomach issues. Is, mm -hmm. is that all, is that connected as well? Can that yeah. be something that you're able to help? Absolutely. Because and here's the thing too, when it comes to food, yes. So the food can create the stomach issues, stress levels create the stomach issues because the autonomic nervous system that we're, we've been talking about that fight or flight nervous system, there's another component called your enteric nervous system. And that has to do with digestion. That is very closely related to the fight or flight nervous system. So when the fight or flight nervous system is kicked in, the enteric nervous system struggles. And so that's when people have a lot of digestive issues. The other thing is, if you are sucking your gut up and in, like we've been taught in that perfect position and posture, you're decreasing space for your digestive tract to work. You're basically taking something that should have a certain amount of space and you're maybe having it or even making it a quarter less or whatever, but you're taking away that space in your digestive tract, part of it to get it to work, it has to open and close. Basically it contracts and relaxes. It, it's called peristalsis to help push your food down, but there's a lot of like little crinks and curves and crevices and all of that needs space to open up so nutrients can get absorbed through the walls of the, like the colon and the small intestine. But if, ever, if it doesn't have enough space, it's not able to do that. And so you'll see a lot of people gain weight because they're eating, they don't feel satiated. And it's because they're sucking it in and holding everything tight and their nervous system's ramped up. So you'll see in constipation is an issue too related to this. So you'll see people as they learn to calm down and let their belly have some space for their digestive tract, they don't have to eat as much. They start losing weight. They start having less digestive issues. So it all comes together. And with uh, women, then when they're menstruating, mm -hmm. because you know, sometimes like they feel like they're going to die. I mean, I've, I, I, yeah. with previous partners, yeah. it's like some, mm -hmm. it's nothing to them. And there's others like they are genuinely in agony. Yeah. Is this something that can help for that as well? Absolutely. So part of um with menstruating and women's hormones is getting everything regulated. So looking at, like you had mentioned earlier, whatever toxins you are putting in, looking at stress levels, looking at food, um, also how you carry yourself will affect how much pain you're having as well in, in your cycle. 
So there's a lot of different ways that you can calm things down, get things a little bit more regulated. And there's there's other disorders, one called PMDD for women who are menstruating, where it's above and beyond just normal PMS um, right before the menstrual cycle. So there's, there's disorders beyond that that can take them into those levels of extreme pain or hormonal shifts that are so strong that they have trouble functioning. And all of that can be addressed. So I tell people, get help for that stuff. Don't just say, oh, I'm I'm just that way. Because, and, and, you know, and I'm sure most men know, it's like you wake up one day and th- the woman you're with is, you know, really upset or crying. The next day she's joyful. And, and these are just responses that the hormones are driving in that woman. And she doesn't know how to control it and doesn't even realize that there's a way to get help so that the hormones start to regulate, but it does take some work to get yourself out of a lot of toxins that are driving this. And I'm not sure do you cover this, but it's something that I don't think a lot of women are aware of, but the actual Mm -hmm. makeups that they're wearing as well, lipsticks are full of toxins. And I wonder is a lot of the issues because of that. Yes, makeup is definitely one of the issues. So I tell people find something that's plant-based, non-toxic. If you're if you want to use makeup or don't wear makeup and start a movement, <laughs> I know that's a hard one, but um the lotions you use, the shampoo, the conditioner, or the facial stuff, um, the deodorant, the laundry detergent, all of it. I I gave up a, all the toxic stuff years ago and I felt so much better hormonally was such a different experience. I didn't have the swings or the symptoms like I did. And even like, I didn't even realize it, but as soon as I did, even the aftershaves and the perfumes are full of toxins as well. And people think, yeah, let's spray and be, you know, Mm -hmm. let people be attracted to me and let's smell good. And it's like, yeah. Yes. The perfumes. Yes. I stopped using those. I'm like, I don't care if I don't smell flowery. Um, if I want something, maybe I'll go find an organic essential oil or whatever, but um, also look at toothpaste too. That's a big one. Mm. And That's uh, Yeah, I use non-fluoride, but it, like mm-hmm. with the, the toothpaste at the end, whether that's trickery or not, but the black is one of the worst ones. And then you have green, which is kind of fluoride free. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, so the colors even blue isn't great either. But the, yeah, so you can just see a little strip at the end <laughs> of your toothpaste, and yeah, yeah. Just, so with the like yeah. say medications, because unfortunately, yeah. I mean, I know when I was young, you know, we used to get a lot of colds and everything, and probably because of the toxins that were jabbed into us when when you're young, but <laughs> sick all the time, and you're mm-hmm. just getting antibiotics and everything, and yeah. no, it's like most doctors don't even examine; they're just because of the kickback system and everything so Mm. like what's the best way because you can't just go cold turkey with getting off some of these things because they're in your system if the is there a safe way because i mean you can't really go to the doctor hey i want to come off this because sometimes you're kind of you know they don't want you to because they're you know they're getting their trip to dubai or wherever it is but what's kind of the best way of Mm -hmm. trying to wean off them when you know None. Yeah. I mean, all my research, I can't see anything that works. It's all been, you know, get a patient for life, blood pressure tablets and everything. Mm-hmm. They, they don't even like they don't examine you properly because I went to one place and they said, oh, your blood pressure's up. And I was like, yeah, no way. I'm not. I just said no way. And like that was, yeah. I don't know, that was over 20 years ago. But they've done it to my parents and like they're on tablets for life. And it's like, but when I investigated and talked to a, a consultant friend of mine, she said they're supposed to do it three times because you could be up stress levels and everything. And they didn't. Mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, they're well known for that, for giving them out. So like, yeah. that's not an isolated incident. That's all over the world. And they just have a patient for life, which in turn, then 10 years later, you have a kidney problem or you have something else. Yeah. So yeah. how is a safe way without all these doctors attacking us that we can try to get away from these toxins. (laughs) Yes. And so what I tell people is, okay, let's look at every aspect of your life. Okay. What time are you going to bed? How long you're sleeping? What you're eating? Are you eating organic and mostly plants and vegetables? Are you moving at least 30 to 60 minutes a day? 
Are you managing and mitigating your stress? And let's go through each of those and let's start fixing each of those. Because what happens is when you address all of it and you start fixing it, your need for those medications goes way down. And I've done this with plenty of people on blood pressure medications, even um, diabetic medications, where you work on all of these aspects and you start coming and you start getting your body so healthy, your doctor who likes to prescribe stuff has to start dropping your dosage down. Or you can also see over in America that we have naturopaths who you can work with who are don't push that stuff as much. But let's say you use insurance or you need to go to your primary care doctor and they're just really gung-ho on your blood pressure medication. And let's say on your blood pressure medication, you're at 130 over 80. Let's say something like that or 120 over 80. When you start going down into 90 over 60, they have to take you off. So obviously I can't tell people to take yourself off of it, but if you start doing all these things and your body just starts to heal and change, and then the medications become harmful to you to keep using, the doctors have to take you off. So that's one way, that's the easiest way to do that. And you can schedule your doctor visit, you know, do this for like a month or two, you start seeing the effects of how you're changing, you're shifting your life, you're healing yourself and you're calming your nervous system down yourself, they have to change it. They they can't, otherwise they're legally liable if they cause a problem because they're giving you a medication that your body no longer needs. So that's how you can trick the system. Brilliant. Excellent. Love it. Love it. So <laughs> yeah. with the course or whatever, do mm -hmm. they have to kind of do one-on-one -on -one with yourself or is the course enough that they can actually understand everything that they can start doing this and uh, apply it to yeah. you know improve health sure sure yeah so i have a fundamentals course and it's four weeks long and that goes through there's three educational videos per week plus two experiential videos where they're doing stuff and that goes for four weeks so they'll get the basic fundamentals of everything we're teaching to calm down their nervous system and how to start implementing it into their life and then I have a 12 week advanced course after that, that goes deeper and deeper and deeper that if they do both of those courses, they're going to get a huge understanding and they're going to be able to use their body and apply it to walking, to movement, to all different things and actually feel the changes. And for a lot of people who have gone through these courses, they feel, oh, my, I no longer have knee pain. I no longer have the back pain. My shoulder went away. So the courses themselves are designed to go slow, but very thorough. And they're taking people on this process that is designed to be kind of more of a general process to address stress, anxiety, and some body pains. When I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, it's usually people who have probably five to 10 different pains. They have other health comorbidities. They have a lot of things going on. So we're ebbing and flowing and changing things a lot. And so that's why some people will choose to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the other thing, the beneficial about a course is you can do it anytime, anywhere in the world. I do work with clients one-on-one -on -one in other all over the world. It's just a little bit harder sometimes to find exact time that works for both of us. So sometimes people around the world like to do the courses instead. Okay. Yeah, Cause I mean, like the reality is it's actually badly needed. The whole medical mm -hmm. industry, big pharma and everything, despite getting billions yeah. in fines, there's no liability. Is there, is this system unique to you or is there other people kind of doing this as well? Not, not to knock mm -hmm. what you're doing, but oh, because yeah. the world is so big, it's like, is there more that kind of do similar or what well, is this your thing? So the, the power method that I've uh, trademarked and all that a pain awareness, breathing relief method, that's mine on my own. There are people that I know who do different body repositioning stuff. And obviously there's thousands of people out there who do different breath work stuff, but I don't know anyone yet in this world. And granted, I only know very few people. Um, I don't know anyone who's combined this into a unique approach. That's exactly what I do. That I'm not aware of anyone who's doing. Obviously, there might be someone out there that does it, but I haven't come across that person yet. 
And it's a, a shame that we can't have somebody like you as the Minister of Health, because in yeah. around, I've seen a few of them around the world. Mm -hmm. Some of them look like mm -hmm. death warmed up and there's others. They're so obese. It's shocking mm -hmm. that they've become the Minister of Health. But uh, like, I suppose, how do we get more people out, like, get this just rippled out because you know yeah. it's grand you know I and I'm saying this in a good way for yeah. yourself that you can get yeah. more people that's actually able to do this right and I I am definitely thinking as many different ways that's why I try to get out speaking to try to educate people my next project after so I launched the video courses I launched some group live courses my next project will be um, besides writing another book, I will be uh, getting a certification course out there so we can get more people trained in this around the world. But I am doing my best trying to get on different um, conferences and stages to get this information out there to at least get people thinking differently. So whether it's they're thinking differently for themselves or if they're a healthcare practitioner, getting them think differently so they advise their patients differently as well so they're not keeping them in the habits that's creating these problems in their people's lives so i am always open for suggestions and ways to get this information out there because i've seen what it can do and i don't rest unless a person gets it it's very important to me because when you see a person get relief or their anxiety is gone, they're no longer taking medications, or they're not having a surgery. It's like Christmas morning. If you celebrate Christmas, it's like Christmas morning. A little kid that's opening a present, you just see the relief in a person. And one thing I stress to them is like, I did nothing. I guided you, I coached you, but you did this yourself. And when that person realizes that they did themselves and they can repeat that no matter what, that they've learned a skill that no one can take away from them, they now have charge over their healing. They're not going somewhere to a doctor and saying, okay, shoot me up with something or pop me a pill, whatever. They're not dependent. And the change in that person's energy, the change in their demeanor, the change in their personality is so special and so precious. It's like, I, I try to get this out there because I want more people to experience that because it really matters and it affects so many people in their lives. And I mean, I, like there's one thing that I kind of do a lot of uh, podcasts on is kind of sovereignty and the freedom and yeah. it's something that I've done. But I believe that comes to health as well because if you come, you come yeah. here, there's no... There's not one, there's no, you know, there's no anything or anything. Like I haven't taken, I can't remember the last, I just don't take anything. I don't go to the doctor. It's like, and I don't want to either. Cause I mean, I know that what they're doing in there is like dangerous. So I think we all have to take responsibility because that's yes. the thing as well. We got lazy. It's like, oh yeah, let's just go to this guy. And, and he's got my best interest in heart. The mm -hmm. person that's got your best interest at heart is yourself. And you have to actually take it back yeah. and take control of it. And once you do that, then that you've got true freedom in life. Absolutely. And it's, you're 100% right. And the thing is, we, one, like you said, we look for the easy way out. But two, we are not aware that there's another option. And I say this because I'd say like a decade or so ago, maybe a bit longer than that. I, I looked up to doctors and I just said, oh, okay, I'm going to go to a doctor. That's what I was trained since I was a little kid. You get sick, you get hurt, you go to a doctor, you do whatever they say, you never question it. And they're human. I remember when I was in grad school taking some courses with some, some physicians teaching them, and they said, we're human. A lot of times we, we listen to your symptoms, we go in the back room and we brainstorm to try to figure out what's going on with you. And he was being honest and truthful. They're doing what they're trained to do. They often, they're so busy and so overwhelmed. They just do what they're trained to do. They don't think outside the box and they don't think let's, let's approach this differently. Maybe we should not just keep prescribing pills, injections, and surgeries. And so if you are only exposed to that world, what I'm saying is going to seem like on the planet Mars, it's going to seem so foreign and this whole idea that we can take control of our health 
we it sometimes takes hearing this a couple times from me, other people to finally sink in and be like, oh, wait, okay. Why am I just going to the doctor and saying, do it, do whatever. Why not take over? So what you're saying is spot on. And I really appreciate that. And like, just trying to get this message out there, get control over yourself, be in charge of your own healing, whatever we can do. I am on board. And what, what shocked me is because I've got a lot of friends around the world and I was in Ireland, I was asking what percentage of your time did you actually for the doctors? Did you get for natural remedies and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Zero in Poland, yeah. zero uh, yeah. UK, there's so many countries and you're like going, yeah. what? There's so many cures out there that you don't need to be popping a pill or doing anything. Yeah. So yeah. who funds it? Who's who creates it? Who does it? And that's all you have to do. You just have to think like that and go, oh, so they don't have my best interest. They're loyal to the dollar. I want you to kind of look at that. You go back to the sovereignty route and you go, OK, I'm great. You know, I, I'm taking it control. Is. It really is. It's 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 it would be harmful to the healthcare system to not be having pills all the time and surgeries. And it's funny when I, you know, as I've spoken on more stages and that my dad always comes back to me aren't you worried about the pharmaceutical companies coming after you I'm like no no no, I'm not big enough don't worry I'm not hurting them enough so <laughs> if if we can get this big enough where then people are stopping using their medications in a healthy way then I'll, I'll get a little bit more scared but right now they're still making tons of money no, and I, I think that's why the having trained around what then there's like yeah. you know not only a hundred but a couple of thousand of them and it's yeah. then it's too late like because yeah. people are, what that's the beauty of health when you go to somebody and they go oh i don't take any medication oh i got off these tablets and everything then the curiosity because people kind of complain they start you know they're talk about all their problems and when they learn from somebody oh i cured this i got off this then they're curious and slowly but surely Big farm. You don't attack them. That's not how we're going to beat them. It's no, it's no. true. What you're doing is actually how we're going to make change. And just just finally, because uh, I with the the two books, I'm just curious what you're covering. Mm -hmm. them. One, I love the title. Is it WTF? To, oh, oh my God. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> yes. Those yeah, are cool so, titles. And that one actually talks a little bit about kind of what we were talking about of you you're kind of going along in life. And this was my experience. I did physical therapy and I was like, okay, I'm going to know everything. I'm going to help people. And you get to the point where you're like, WTF, like, okay, I'm not really helping people. Seriously. Like I'm just following this process. It kind of helps people. It kind of doesn't. And then I stumble on what I do now. And I'm putting this method together into, oh my, wow. I am now making an impact. I'm teaching people things exact opposite of what I used to, which I feel bad for the people I used to teach that to. But I, I'm trying to get this out there to fix that. And you you branch out and kind of the mental process. We're part of that book was going through the mental process and the resistance I faced from doctors telling me if I did this process with them, they wouldn't send me patients from my boss getting mad at me and threatening my job at the time to me finally just sticking to my guns and saying, you know what, I'm leaving it all and I'm not going back. And I, I've seen the results I believe in myself. And so that process was that book was talking about how that process happened as an entrepreneur and, um, it was quite, it was a lot of fun to, to go through that. Excellent. Excellent. Listen, yeah. thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. You Thank might you. let people know how they can get in contact with you. Sure. The easiest way is to go to my website, paberinstitute.com. So P is in pain, A is in awareness, B is in breathing, R is in relief, institute.com. On there, you can catch interviews, you can get free resources, you can also um, sign up for a free 15 minute consultation with me. If you wanna learn more and see what the best path is for you, if it's the right fit, or if you have other questions, I, I do respond and I try to get back to people within 24 hours. It, it matters that you took the time and you're very curious, so I wanna make sure I respond to you. Okay, brilliant, thanks very much. And I make sure I put the link button, the audio and the video. Thank you so much, Roy.
no problem. So that's all for the meditation podcast and also the awakening podcast because I think health is most important. So I'll make sure I put it on that one as well. And uh, you'll find everything about me, my other podcasts, and my coaching on bio.link forward slash podcaster. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, a five star rating, share with your friends. And when you get Amy's book, make sure you give her a five star rating and the review as well because it all helps more people get to see the message. Until next week, take care. Hi, I'm uh, Roy Collin. I'm the host. And you can find everything about me and my five podcasts in the QR code wire.link forward slash podcaster as well as my coaching. And I'd like to thank my sponsors. So if you or somebody you know is struggling with anxiety and want to know how to be 100% anxiety free in six weeks without therapy or drugs, fully guaranteed, then let me tell you about our sponsor, Daniel Packard. Daniel Packard is a UC Berkeley mechanical engineer and his company has spent eight years researching and testing to develop an innovative process that solves your anxiety permanently in just six weeks. With an astounding 90% success rate, because the program is so effective, people who join the program only pay at the end once they have clear, measurable results. If you're interested in solving your anxiety in six weeks, fully guaranteed, and you want to learn more and have a free consultation with Daniel, go to danielpacker.com and you'll see it there is the QR code. Do you have high blood pressure and want to get off the meds? Doctors are amazed at what the Zona Plus can do. You'll get a $50 discount with my code ROY and you'll find the link at zona.com slash discount slash ROY or just use the code ROY on checkout and you'll see the code just behind me there for QR codes. You can take a screenshot. Stalflex, quality Polish manufacturers of metal products for telecommunication and workshop equipment and other metal articles. Let us know if you would like a quotation shipped internationally at very competitive prices. And you can see the QR code there. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.